everyone, my name is Beth Dunn and I'm here to talk to you about how you can change the way content works on your team. It's a topic that's so close to my heart, I wrote a whole book about it, Cultivating Content Design from a Book Apart. It's based on my experiences building a content design practice and global team from scratch at HubSpot over the last dozen or so years. And my work as a leadership coach, working with content leaders and executives as they grow and scale their practices and teams. Now I've moved over into an internal comms role at HubSpot and my colleague, John Coleman, is leading the charge on the content design team. He'll be speaking at Tempo tomorrow, so don't miss that. But I'm here to talk about what I've learned about how to grow a content design practice in, in an organization, whether you're a solo practitioner, an IC on a team, a manager of ICs or of managers, um, organizations come in all shapes and sizes, it's true. And so do teams and leaders and your leadership style is gonna vary from mine, I'm sure. Every single one of us has our own unique challenges and circumstances, but no matter who or where we are, I find the path to success does bend in some fairly predictable ways from what I've seen. Obviously your mileage may vary, but today we're gonna to talk about how to chart your own path to building a strong, healthy, and respected content design practice wherever and whoever you are. Here's how we'll do it. We'll explore the common stages, which may or may not already be familiar to you, of starting out all alone, putting down some roots, growing new shoots, and what to do when you feel like you've got it made in the shade. So this is where many of us find ourselves at the start, right? Or maybe even the middle, um, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. A lot of us start out as the only content person on a much bigger team, or maybe you're already part of a bigger team. Maybe you're leading a bigger team, a bigger content team, but you feel all alone. This is so, so common in our field. If you've been feeling alone, you're not alone. Show of hands, how many people here have ever felt alone or isolated in your content work? Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, so we're already on really familiar ground, but here's the thing. You can choose to make this a position of strength. Your very aloneness can be your superpower because what you choose to do at this stage and the way you choose to see yourself and your surroundings can be self-fulfilling prophecies at times. So I think how you see yourself and your world will determine how the rest of your story goes. So who are you? Are you an isolated content person fighting against a sea of adversity? Is it you against the world with no hope for help on the horizon? A lot of us spend time in our careers feeling isolated, alone, frustrated, and even helpless. And those are completely valid feelings, but you can also choose to move into a new phase of your story. You can choose to see yourself and your organization in a whole new light. The first step is to change how you see yourself in this story. You're a content professional, you know how this works. Your first job is to change the narrative because you're the hero now. You are in charge. You're the one who's going to decide how all this goes down. And your first move is to change the story of what your job actually is and can be. You may have a very clear vision for this in your own head, a crystal clear idea of how you would prefer to work with your colleagues and teams. You'd like to be involved in projects from the start to be able to offer your input and expertise at every stage of the game where the full suite of what you can offer is fully understood, sought out and respected, right? I'm here to tell you that that's not an impossible dream, but only if you can clearly visualize and explain it to a wide variety of non-content people. It's the key because whether you know it or not, what you're talking about here is that crystal clear vision. That's what I like to call full stack content design. It's a clear, simple model that can help you convey this dream state of yours to the people you work with so that you all have the same vision in mind. So what do I mean by full stack content design? Well, it's a model that I obviously adapted from the classic seven layers of UX popularized years ago by Jesse James Garrett. I streamlined it down into just three simple layers to give you and your colleagues a clear, compelling vision 
for what a full stack content design practice can do. And being able to articulate this vision and maintain it as the ideal form of reality, indeed, as what is in fact already true, is going to be vital to changing how content works on your team. So what is it? Well, it starts at the top, uh, which is really the end. Surface work is usually the last stage of any project where content that's often already been developed gets proofread and polished, corrected and cleaned up. This is the part where you tend to hear the words, can you just, a lot, can you just make it sound better? Can you just jazz it up a bit? In fact, I used to call this the jazz hand stage of the work. All the choreography is already in place and they just want you to add some razzmatazz or to fix their punctuation or adjust the wording or tone or cram it into 50 characters or less, right? You know, check the grammar, make it conform to your style guide, super important stuff. But still, only scraping the surface of what content design is and can do. And if that's all that people think you can do, then that's all they'll ever ask you to do. Uh, it just perpetuates the cycle forever and ever. So what might be under the surface? What else could you do? Well, as it turns out, you could be working on the structure of things, not just the structure of the content, but the architecture, the order of operations, the whole flow. Now, this is where you get the time and space to weigh in on things like usability, learnability, accessibility, before it gets set in stone and not quite in the right way. So that's exciting. That's good, clean content work. We love that. And, and what lies beneath or, or comes before that? Well, this is everybody's favorite. Now we're at the strategy and scope stage of the game. The holy grail, the real deal, the part of the story where you get to decide what this content, this whole experience, this thing itself is actually going to be trying to do. And what it won't do. <laughs> what are you going to leave out and why? Because what does the user actually need? Oh, and how are you going to go about discovering that and validating that? That strategy. And when you're all alone, it seems like that kind of thing gets decided in meetings that you never get invited to. Somebody tweeted once that content design is basically saying, you should have invited me to an earlier meeting over and over again until you die. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. Now, if you can articulate this model, you're more than halfway there. If you can share this vision with the people on your team, you're making some serious strides. And better still, if you can practice this model on your team, if you can use content design to grow content design, well, now we're having fun. But most of us don't go this route, not at first. I know I didn't. Most of us first try to just fight for headcount, not realizing that headcount at this stage is not always the answer. In fact, arguing for headcount, I found, before we get people on board with this vision of full stack content design, will almost always go nowhere. Why? Because if all these people that you work with think you can do is surface work, they'll just wonder why you wanna hire so many proofreaders. So first, we have to make sure that as many people as possible get it, like really, really get it. And once that starts to happen, it honestly snowballs. The system takes over and you don't have to keep advocating for content all of the time. But how do you start that snowball rolling down the hill. Well, as I teased earlier, you'll use content design to grow content design. You start with the people you work with and you content design the heck out of them. Um, I'm basically asking you to practice full stack content design on your organization as a method of organizational change. So that's the plan. So where do we start? Well, you've already started. You start by changing how you see yourself and your role and the kind of power that you have. And this is why it's good to be a party of one right now. It's, it's easier to start if you just have to get your own self on board. Now you're ready to start putting down roots. So to recap, we've agreed that you're not struggling against a sea of adversity. You are in fact powerful, connected, and armed with a vision of how life should be. And that is, fun fact, one fun definition of a leader. And here we are at LEAD with Tempo. It's all coming together. As a side note, did you know that trees aren't really individual organisms either? Not really. They're in intricately networked mega organisms connected at the roots. Of course you knew that. 
and so are you. You're not alone. You're already surrounded by all these other contenty trees, right in your own organization, not just here. Maybe you just haven't identified them as such yet, but I'm gonna help you do that. So now that you've changed how you see yourself and maybe changed how you see the people and the systems around you, you're ready to change how those people and systems actually work. So how do we do that? Well, every good design project starts with a problem statement, right? In our case, it starts when somebody comes to you with a problem that they want you to solve. When they come up and say, could you just, yeah, we're gonna take that energy right there and transform it. <laughs> what if we saw every request for content help, no matter how small, as a much more meaningful opportunity, as, as the thin edge of the wedge? Because honestly, what's the real user problem here? Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with this lovely thing. It's a user story. As a something or other, I want to do something so I can, you know, do something else. You know the routine. So what is our user story in this situation? When one of our coworkers comes up to us and asks us to give some of their pre-existing, maybe not so great copy, their, that maybe their five minutes from shipping, uh, the old jazz hands treatment. Well, if we're the user in this user story, you know, our story might look something like this. Eh, maybe not the most productive, but totally valid feelings again. Uh, but we've decided we're not going to live in that story anymore, right? We're going to change that narrative. So we're going to set that narrative aside for now. You can always pick it up again if that's what you need to do. Um, and for now, we're going to shift that narrative to something like, as a content design leader, I want to change how you see me so I can be a more strategic partner next time. So that might be a good one. Oh, but wait, there's actually a competing storyline here, too, because what's their user story? Well, maybe it's something like as a product manager, for instance, I want this app to sound more friendly so that more people will use it. Fair, totally valid and awesome user need. And we as content people can totally do that. So they want it to be a friendlier app and we want to do more strategic work. So there is obviously, for sure, an overlap in the Venn diagram here, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I know this is a really technical slide here, but there is a clear overlap between what they want and what we want. So I figure, why not both? We're gonna use content design to grow content design. We're going to meet them where they are, fulfill our user needs, fulfill their user needs. And in fact, we'll do them one better than that. We'll make them want more. We'll make them see how much more there is to content design. I like to use workshops to do all of the above. Workshops, in my experience, workshops work. And it starts when a PM or a designer or whoever it is asks you to just make this sound better. You say, absolutely, 100%, but I've got an idea. Let's do it together. And why don't you bring your whole team? Yeah, the whole team. I want to make it so that everyone on your team can make great content happen even when I'm not in the room. Because I mean, I may only be one person, I may only be part of a very small team, we're probably all stretched pretty thin. Let's make it so that you and your team can do some of this yourselves. First, we'll decide if it's a surface, a structure, or a strategy workshop based on what it is they asked you for. And in my experience, especially when you're just getting started with this process, 90% of the time, it's gonna be something up here. It's gonna be something on the surface. Um, so we'll give them that workshop. We'll give them what they want, but we'll also make sure to give them a nice preview of the next layer down, just the next layer down, really, and give them that solid grounding that they need in surface work, and then give them a taste of what lies below. So here's how you might structure these workshops that I found worked well for me. First, you give them that overview of full stack content design. You can use that diagram that I shared a minute ago. Um, go into some detail about what role content plays at each stage of the game, the activities you engage in, the artifacts you produce, the value thereof. Quick, but complete. Give them that shared vision of the future of what really good full stack content design is. Then do a nice deep dive into the layer that they wanted help with in this instance. If they asked you for help with a surface concern, show them how you approach problems like that. Talk about one or two other things in the layer that you've noticed that they could use some help on. Maybe they don't even know. I like to stick with just like three to five tips. Give them that quick preview of the layer below that once you've done that. Kind of just like 
almost like a throwaway. Like, of course, if we had more time and it was two or three months ago, we could have done a user journey mapping project together. So we could have parceled out that cognitive load of this flow a bit more usefully. I mean, they probably don't even know that that's a service that you offer. So you make sure that they know for next time in a friendly FYI sort of way and move on. The point is here that you're introducing them to the full suite of products that you, as a content designer, have at your command. I mean, this is classic product design here, right? You're designing an experience for your coworkers that is essentially onboarding them to the user experience of full stack content design. You give them the big picture by explaining the concept of full stack content design. Then you give them that wow moment of solving for their immediate need. Like it's nothing, like it's cake. And then boom, you give them that vision of the beautiful future, of them walking down a tropical beach hand in hand with content design. It's classic onboarding and it's classic for a reason because it freaking works. And look at you go. You are now using content design to grow content design like the boss that you are. And by doing that one small thing, that one little workshop, you've achieved quite a lot. You've given them what they asked for. You've scaled your content practice by recruiting a few more people to do at least a small part of the work that you do. And you've gotten another group of coworkers to see the forest of full stack content design, not just the trees. It's an important work. Now, as you keep doing these workshops, you'll start to notice that you gather more and more content champions from all over your organization. Um, they start to pop up all over the place. Now it's time to dig deeper and start to really feed and water those folks. These are what I like to call the people who get it. They are the ones who will start asking you for increasingly deeper stack work because A, they now know that there is such a thing uh, because you told them about it, and B, they know that deeper stack work is a service that you can provide. And deeper stack work, I think, should always come first. So you'll be able increasingly to prioritize that. Why? Because you've already freed up some of your time by training some people to do some surface work. If you keep running those workshops, maybe even record one or two of the more regularly scheduled events uh, so that you can run them async. Train people to use Hemingway, Grammarly, or another tool like that. Whatever it takes to make sure that their work is at least error free. Does this involve learning how to let some of that go? Absolutely, it does. But that's where we're at in the process right now. We're freeing up whatever time we can so that we can say yes to the people who get it and prioritize their deeper stack work. This is such a key moment, really, because you stop focusing so much on the skeptics, right? And you focus more on the people who, who get it, who want to do content design the way that you want to do content design. You'll be so much happier. <laughs> By now, you're starting to really gather momentum. You've got this whole crew of people who really get the idea of full stack content design. It may not be in their title, right? But that's okay, it's in their hearts. So how can you keep them engaged and learning about content? I don't know, maybe you could start an informal book club. A lot of you have done things like this already. You could open up a content Slack channel where you share links, ask questions, share ideas, run a few content critiques, or invite somebody from another company over for a casual AMA. This does not have to be for people whose title is content designer. It's for anybody who gets it, whatever works, and within, within easy reach for you. The idea is to create a culture of curiosity and openness and optimism around content. Now, after all your hard work, you should be living the life. More people around you are asking you for deeper, more impactful work. You've taught or farmed out more of the less skilled, repetitive work. You're surrounded by an active and engaged community of content supporters and fans. Everything is awesome, except mm, now you might be grappling with a whole nother problem. It's a good problem because now you've got great big piles of uh, deeper stack work coming in, you might have a little problem with which of that work you choose to do first or at all. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it is time to get serious about how to prioritize your work. And I know a lot of us have struggled with this. A lot of us start here. These are our two prioritization plans. First come, first serve, and loudest voice in the room. No shame, right? We've all been there. But there are other things you could use. I mean, you could prioritize in terms of how each project aligns with your company's strategic goals. Uh, maybe that's not available to you. Maybe it's not as well uh, laid out for you to map 
to. Um, maybe you create your own simple formula based on impact, reach, projected revenue, whatever's available to you. My advice is to not to get too hung up on what goes into your algorithm. Just create it, share it, and iterate it with time. Or you could just cut through that whole Gordian knot and just do deeper stack work first. Just reward the people who ask you for deeper stack work. Why not? I'm literally not saying that one of these prioritization methods is better than the others. All I'm saying is that you need some system, some repeatable formula to clarify how you decide what you'll do first or at all. Now you have all this great work coming in and you really need some more heads. And what's great is at this point, you won't be the only person who knows it. You now have all these people who know they need your expertise, time and energy, but they aren't getting it or they're not getting it in time. They are the ones who will ask for content headcount. They are the ones who will feel most keenly the need for more people like you. Now you are totally on the same side. Now this is both of your user stories. The two have become one. As a hiring manager, I want to hire more content designers so I can increase usage, get more retention, get more revenue. Look at that. Other people, powerful people in your organization <coughs> are connecting the dots and saying that full stack content design has a direct and traceable connection to your core business goals, usage, retention, revenue. How amazing is that? So we did it. We delivered on their user story and on ours. We built a better app and we grew a content design practice. Go team. Does that seem like a tall order? Can one small content designer who stands possibly all alone really change the course of a whole company? Absolutely. But this is an important key point. If and only if you also take time to take care of yourself. Remember that you are the linchpin to this whole project's success. You are your own most valuable asset. Now we've all been there. We invest 100% of our energy on growing our practice and growing our teams and perhaps 0% on feeding ourselves. So my advice is to try to prioritize yourself first. You're doing it now. The best thing that you can do is seek out your peers. Find your people. Find a community of other content folks who get you. You're here at Tempo, which is a great start. Uh, but it shouldn't just be a once a year thing. Join a Slack channel, join several, be active. You will not only feel less alone, you will be less alone. Carve out some time to mentor others in content who are a few pages behind you. Seek out those with a different background or life experience than you. Um, you'll be amazed at how this practice can keep you fresh, enthusiastic, and engaged. Find yourself a mentor or coach. Every successful leader I know has a coach these days. Find someone who will support you in making the right choices for you. And make time to make stuff that you love. So many of us got into this field because we were creative. And somehow over time, that maker persona gets shoved off to the side. Bring that old friend back to the fore. Make cool stuff outside of work. And whatever you do, begin it now. The conditions will never be perfect to do whatever it is you've been dreaming of. Imperfect beginnings are where it's at. Everything wonderful started out life weird, wonky, or completely whacked out. It's totally true. You can look it up. Somebody once said that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is right now. So let's go. Are you ready? Because my friends, the world is ready for you. Go get them.